Join us now for a stroll down memory lane and see just what occurred in your favorite year, 1962. So make yourself comfortable and prepare to recall the real pictures of the good old days. Enjoy the flick. The film capitals Big Night. The Santa Monica Civic Auditorium is the scene of the Oscar Awards. And Rock Hudson reads the first thrilling announcement, Best Supporting Actress, Rita Marino. And she's wide-eyed over the whole thing. I can't believe it! Then there's the popular choice for the crowd, as Joan Crawford makes the presentation for the best actor. The Oscar goes to Maximilian Schell. Burt Lancaster calls out the name of the best actress. She is Sophia Loren, the first actress in a foreign language film to be so honored. And Greer Garson receives the Oscar for the absent Sophia. Then the breathless climax as the audience hears the best picture of the year named by Fred Astaire. The film is The West Side Story, a musical tale of passions and conflict in New York slums. Co-director and producer Robert Wise receives the statuette for his fellow artists. Hollywood had a great year, and West Side Story topped them all. Next to the circus, what better sign of spring than Easter bonnets? Dame Fashion is flipping her lid over these styles for the big parade. And if these don't draw admiring glances, we just don't know what will. Feast your eyes, ladies, the treat's on us. Large brimmed cloche in silk print. Pretty? Ah, yes, they are. The flowered and bowed number on the left contrasts nicely with the organdy. Or maybe you prefer a shiny straw Breton banded with grow grain ribbon. A companion piece is this brimmed cloche sprinkled with apple blossoms. Brian and Sally have two others to show off. Here's a straw beret with bow. Completely flowered for complete flattery, poppies form this chic cloche. And to top this tale of toppers, here's an oversized flounce brim with a flower playing peekaboo. Ah yes, the bands are tuning up for the Easter parade, and this year Milady can be sure that she will have a hat full of style. A cake for a golden occasion. Universal Pictures marks its 50th birthday with a worldwide celebration. The stars that glitter for Universal include Lana Turner, and come September or any other month, Sandra Dee and Bobby Darren are top favorites. Rock Hudson is a favorite in any language, and at a recent German festival, he was honored as the outstanding box office favorite. The movie that sunk the submarine service in laughs conditioned Cary Grant for his new role in That Touch of Mink. Universal's Galaxy includes Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. From Hiawatha to Spartacus, Universal has done much to revolutionize the entertainment world and now looks forward to a second half century of progress. World honors for Universal and Kirk Douglas came with a royal performance in London of Spartacus. At this first overseas performance of the sweeping epic, Princess Margaret was on hand to congratulate all concerned with the picture, including Mr. Douglas. The Queen's charming sister had a special comment for Milton Rackmill, Universal President, and America Aboaf, Vice President. Now, Mr. Rackmill with Cary Grant cuts the anniversary cake. The world's oldest motion picture company with the youngest of ideas prepares for a second half century of entertaining the wide, wide world. Major London designers mark Fashion Week with a showing of autumn fashions that indicate a resurgence of daring among Britain's stylists. A polished worsted, this semi-fitted suit and leather hat is aimed at the over 30 trade. This short dress and jacket are made from the famous British Lever's Lace, a fine fabric for dresses and light coats. You'll find country living in this wool sweater dress with black rib polo collar and cuffs. Then out of country clothes and into this organza evening gown for a night on the town. If the show's not a hit, 
This is sure to be one. A hint of Fashion Week is this strapless gown in satin. From the classic suit to flimsy evening wear, London stylists have designs on the lady. One of the most famous stars in Hollywood history is dead at 36. Marilyn Monroe was found dead in bed under circumstances that were in tragic contrast to her glamorous career as a comic talent. On the surface, she seemed to have such a zest for life. Her international appeal took her from command appearances to the other side of the world and entertainment for Korean GIs. The star led a far from normal childhood and had 12 sets of foster parents, leading her to say in her last interview that she was never used to being happy, so it wasn't something she ever took for granted. She never let her personal feelings interfere with her job, and she was the idol of the G.I.s, the animation of foxhole dreams. She found no happiness in marriage. Her second husband was baseball immortal Joe DiMaggio, and that marriage ended as had her first in divorce. Her third husband was playwright Arthur Miller, and they too separated. Miss Monroe played in 23 films since her debut in 1950, films that grossed $200 million. The Golden Girl received 5,000 fan letters a week, and to those fans, she never let any personal problems dim her screen glamour. Despite flashes of temperament and tantrums, she turned in performances that kept her among the greatest box office favorites in motion picture history. <laughs> 